Hello and good morning everyone. Uh, you all know James by now. James is here with us in the studio. Today we're going to change the topic a little bit. We're going to talk about the top 10 or top 7 mistakes you make before you close on a loan. Why is that critical? Because we see and James see these mistakes happening all the time. These mistakes happen all the time guys. So please pay attention to this uh, segment because this is very critical to know. James, my first question to you is that I've seen some people overextend their credit right before they close. Can you comment on that, please? So yes, Khan, you're right. A lot of times I do see the ball fumbled at the goal line with clients pertaining to credit issues. One of the things I've seen as of late is uh, I've had a client who was self-employed, and uh, I know you've heard about the SBA loans that are available right now to help businesses in need. And um, you know, unfortunately, the client had applied for one of these loans and received a large lump sum of money uh, as aid or assistance to their business. This actually had a dramatic impact on their debt to income ratio. Luckily, this particular client uh, did have additional funds available to add to the down payment to lower uh, their debt to income ratio. The second mistake people make, and I've seen this myself, happened to me too, is to overlook the debt to income ratio. That's a key factor, guys. You don't want to offset that. So that's our tip number two that James is going to talk about, how you want to make sure your debt to income ratio does not change. As you're going through the home buying process, we're going to take a in-depth look at your income. Sometimes I've had clients who may receive some form of a bonus, uh, maybe overtime, or even receive commissioned income. We will be averaging those things over a 12 month period. So don't think just because this month, you know, you worked uh, an additional X amount of hours in terms of overtime that that can be used or carried out. In relations to your debt, your income is divided by your monthly outgoing debt. So with that being said, if for any reason things are to increase, that could put your home purchase in jeopardy. Thank you, Jim. That's a great point. Tip number three. This is very, very critical. Okay, so hear me out. Make sure your employment is secure. Do not lose your job. Your employment is the driving factor for you to getting the loan. So please don't forget that. I'll let James comment on that. During these unprecedented times, all of our lives have been infected by COVID and this epidemic. With that being said, make sure that your job is not impacted by the effect of COVID and what it's had on our nation here. A lot of times I've had some clients who may now be receiving hazard pay or reduction in hours. And of course that changes the way your overall income is qualified. Point number four guys, uh, do not delay filing your taxes. Your tax returns, whether it's W-2s, 1099s, whatever tax structure you have, make sure you have that secure because if you don't have that, again, the processor may have an issue with it and then you'll get in trouble. So I'll let James comment on that further. Yes, as you know, tax deadlines have been extended this year now through July 15th. It is, however, August. You can no longer wait or delay to have your taxes done. In the event that you were applying for a mortgage, we would at least need proof of an extension that had been granted to you by the IRS. So tip number five, and this is a key one, okay? You're applying for a house or investment property you wanna buy, you want that loan to go through. Do not go and buy another property. Don't make a large purchase, that's gonna affect your loan. One thing at a time, and this is a very sequential process, one thing at a time, make sure you close on one property successfully before you go buy another one or make a large purchase or buy a new car. So leave all those large purchases, your Gucci bags and Prada shoes, for a different time, okay? Stick with one property at a time. James, your comments. Absolutely. And I'd like to elaborate on the no large purchases. Con, I've actually recently dealt with this last week and it's quite a funny story. Yeah. Everyone knows that an American Express is not technically a credit card. It is a charge card. So depending upon which type of American Express you have, you would be required to pay off your full monthly balance in full every month at the end of your statement balance. If maybe you went away on vacation this month or you saw an item that you liked on sale, this could have a dramatic impact on being able to qualify for your home as well. Please save all of your large purchases until after you've completed your mortgage transaction. So point number six guys, point number six is key now. Uh, a lot of people underestimate the fact that they have a 401k and then you could take the money out to use for a purchase, right? It could be a loan, could be something else. Guess what? You have to pay taxes on that. Do not underestimate that part of the purchase. So James will comment on that and let you know why that's critical and how he's seen it happen all the time. 
with now being such a competitive market here in the Northern Virginia, DC, and Maryland area. I'm seeing a lot of clients start to pull money from whether it's an IRA, 401 account, or some sort of investment account. Please do not forget to calculate your taxes. Although it would be nice to have your home here today, you don't want to be surprised at the end of the year when you're paying taxes on funds that you withdrew. Great point, James. Point number seven, guys. Do not have zero credit card balance or zero balance on your credit. If you have a zero balance, that means you have not made any purchases, you don't have any transactions showing. You actually actively know how to manage your money. So what creditors are looking for is how you manage your money, how you manage a loan before they give you a loan. Think about this. Would you give somebody a loan if you have no history, no record of them managing that loan? Uh, James, your comments. I've had a lot of clients who have had to pay down debt in order to qualify for the purchase of their home. With that being said, sometimes a zero balance can be more detrimental than helpful. Take into consideration, just as Khan had mentioned, if you haven't had the history of working with debt in the past, how could a mortgage lender trust you to have the history of paying a mortgage on time monthly? Point number eight, guys. Uh, do not forget there's extra fees for appraisals, inspections, earnest money and other such factors. So take into account your overall cost, right? You don't want to just have a cost for the house purchase and the loan. There is a lot of things that go around the loan that encompasses a loan and other stuff that James will tell us you need to know. As you go through the home buying process, there are additional costs that are not calculated within the close. Things like your home inspection, your home appraisal, a radon test, or even a pest inspection. All of these things are very necessary and they are needed. Do not use the funds that you intended for your down payment or your actual closing costs to cover these. Even your earnest money deposit, it will be placed into the transaction, however, it will be backed out of the bottom line at the end. Keep in mind that there's always costs associated with the purchase of a home. Okay, point number nine. We're almost there, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Point number nine is very critical, you know, and I've done this mistake myself as an investor, if you're an investor or not. As investors, we always would like to see the highest value, appraised value of the property, right? But that's not the truth, guys. So you have to be realistic. You have to have a mental check. The, the value that I am assessing in my books, in my spreadsheet, is the actual market value right now or not. So James will tell you why having a realistic appraisal value of your property will help you secure that loan faster. There are three types of values I like to keep in mind when working through my mortgage transactions. You have an appraised value of a home, you have the market value of a home, and in some cases we have the ARV, or the after renovation value. All of these will differ. Sometimes I've had clients go on things such as Zillow.com, maybe Redfin, and they will give some form of an estimate. Usually these will put you in a ballpark, but they are not exact. Please think realistically when you're attempting to price or value your home mentally. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into that. Last but not least, this is point number 10. This is the last bit, okay? Be very careful when you hear this and when you do this. Do not empty your bank accounts. I know you've given the bank statements to the lender. I know you've done that. But you may be asked again to provide some statements if there's a question, if you have a trust or a different kind of account. Some people have multiple bank accounts and multiple accounts in different banks, which is you know, what I do. You can always at any time during the process, you know, underwriter can ask you for a, for a new bank statement or your new uh, debt to credit ratio. And James will tell you how it is critical to maintain the same status quo until the loan closes. Do not change too many things, guys. Make sure your account balance is not zero. I couldn't agree more. I've seen it all, from newlyweds who decided to merge funds to maybe someone who decided to have just enough money for the transaction in their bank account. Keep things as you normally would. No large deposits or purchases, and everything should go accordingly. With that being said, always keep in mind, in some cases, we are seeing that some of our clients are actually asked to keep reserves. Although these are not funds that will be used today in the transaction, the lenders want to see that you have them available in the event of emergency. So guys, thank you for watching the video through this, all these 10 top 10 tips. Hopefully they were helpful for you. We got one more bonus tip for you guys, and this is a key one. Talk to a professional, a proven track record professional like James here. There's a lot going on in the market, and you want to be in the know. Work with a professional who's local, experienced, and has the knowledge to help you get the job done.
Well, James, thank you for coming, man. Thank you for having me. We'll have you again. Absolutely.